Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be walking you through painting this turkey, ceramic turkey. It's a lantern, so you can put a tea light, a battery operated tea light in the back, or you can put what they have now, these fairy lights, which are really good. They light up really nicely, okay, and they last a long time. Uh, they have a warning inside of each of the turkeys about leave, leaving a, um, a live candle, you know, a, a lit candle unattended, and so that's to make sure that you know not to do that. That's why I recommend using the fairy lights or the battery operated tea light or just leaving it as it is. He's cute as he is anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I went ahead and I base coated my turkey so that you didn't have to sit there and watch me just put the brown on it. So what you can do now is you can pause the video and you can do the brown on the entire turkey. Do inside, and you know, do the outside first. Make sure you have enough paint to do the outside. You should have plenty. Uh, and then you can do the inside in another color at the very end because you probably have extras of the other colors also. All right, and um, I gave you two brushes in the kit which are a little small. They work, but if you wanted to get any additional brushes, you can get them on Amazon and you can get uh, water-based acrylic brushes or you can get what they call uh, hog hair dry brushes, which are a little stiffer. Uh, you can get an assortment of brushes and they have them inexpensive to expensive. So if you're gonna be painting, that might be a good idea too, because these are the only ones that I supplied with the kit. So it will take a little bit longer to do. You can use the square one to put on the base coat and it doesn't have to be solid. I don't know if you can see that I don't have solid coverage. I try to get all my white spots covered, although right now I see a couple of white spots right there that I really should go over. And I'll do that while you're catching up and doing the brown on your piece. We don't want the white spots showing because when you do the color over the brown, the white will probably show in the crevices. It won't show on raised areas because we're gonna be putting other colors over the top of it. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna double check right now. And it's always a good idea to turn your piece upside down. That's when you see the spots you missed that are underneath. So I'm taking the little brush that you have and touching up all those little white spots so that they don't show at the end. Even though I thought I did a good job, I could see a lot of white spots that I have. And you know, even after the piece is finished, you can always go back and touch up the brown again. All right, so get one thin coat. Now you pull your paint out as far as it'll go. Um, if your paint is still wet when you're dipping for more paint, that you should let it dry first before you start laying color on top of color. All right, if you put it on thin and you pull it out, it'll dry very fast. So just take your time putting the brown on and make sure it's nice and smooth and don't resume this um, video until the piece is completely dry. All right, and then what I did is called dry brushing, which means there's very little paint in the brush when you paint this turkey. So um, the white is gonna be the last color I do because everything is tipped in white. There's white here. There's white on the edge of his body. There's white on the tail, okay? And, and on the tip of the wings also. So white is gonna be the last color that you do. And I'm gonna use a bigger brush only for time's sake, but you can use the smaller brush. It'll work exactly the same way. But I want, what I want you to know is you pick up just very, very little paint in your brush and then you wipe it out on a paper towel. I'm starting with the gray because I'm gonna to try to use one brush to do this entire piece. And, and when I dry brush, I don't wash the brush between colors. The, um, the water in the brush is not good for dry brushing. So I put a little bit of gray in the brush and I take it out on the paper towel. Now I'm gonna do his head with the gray. I actually even have just a dot of the turquoise in it. Very, very, very little. I mean, it's just like nothing. And I blend the gray and the turquoise together on a paper towel until I get a color that I like. See what I'm playing with over here? And then I'm gonna pat it onto his head and that's pretty similar. Okay, and you could do it just the gray. And you go right over the eyes, it's not gonna matter. And when you dry brush, you're putting it on very, very, very lightly. It's, you could pounce it on. And if you want, you can paint it on, but this is the way I did it. And you just keep going back over it. So then again, I'm gonna pick up a dot of gray and a little, little, little dot of the turquoise. And to me, that's too much turquoise, so I'll go back and put a little more gray in my brush. 
blend them together and go back and do some more. And when you're dry brushing, it's a good idea to do two coats because the second coat really makes a difference. You really need good drying time, but the second coat makes a big difference. And I call it like a pounce and a pull. You pounce down, not straight on, but with the side of the brush, and you give it a little pull. Now, if it's lifting up the color, like my top of my head is here, that means the color's too wet on your first coat and you really should allow it to dry. So, because I'm pushing it, I'm not allowing it to dry and that's lifting up the color that's underneath. So I'm not gonna get the, the full effect, but I will go back later on. But um, see his head? That'd be a little different in color, but not too much. All right, so now we want to go to the next lightest color because once I put a dark color in my brush, um, it's very hard to go back to the light color. So I'm going to go to the yellow next. I'm going to just wipe out my color, not washing my brush. Wipe out the color, picking up a little bit of yellow. Maybe do it twice to get rid of the previous color that's in the brush. I use the next color to clean the previous color out of the brush. Okay, so now I have yellow in the brush and I'm going to do the top of the wing and the tail here and the tail here in the front. So I will start with the top of the wing and I'm gonna go down from the top. I'm gonna to do all the yellow areas once, this way I allow my color to dry. So I did that side and now I'm gonna be doing this side. And then once I go around once, then it maybe there's enough drying time that I can go back and do a second coat. Okay, so then in here I'm going to be doing, my brush is losing hairs. Okay, pick up a little bit more. Now over here I'm going to be doing it like a, an arch, like a half moon. And I'm going to come across, I'm going to do it this way so you can see it. Lay your brush flat and come across that way. So this way, you leave the brown showing in the crevices, as you can see on that one. So you go back and forth in both directions. And there's no right or wrong as to how high the yellow is. It's up to however you want to do it. Turkeys come in many, many, many different colors. So you can do whatever you want. So um, see, it's lifting up a little bit of my brown here, which means my brown is not dry enough if that happens. Just allow it to dry and go back later. I'm going to do the three sections, the tail, oh, and the beak. You have to do the beak also. Now you can use your little pointy brush to do the beak if you want. That you can actually paint on. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the back of the tail. The back of the tail has, again, an arch going around. And I do that by flattening my brush and going around like that. And then I go in the opposite direction. And I'll go up a little higher than I want because I'm gonna be overlapping the turquoise onto the yellow. This is really a mustard color that I'm using. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start with the wings again. Now, the second coat that you do, look at the difference in the second coat versus the first coat. It makes a big difference. And just kind of tap it on. This way it won't lift it as much. And I'm not putting more paint in my brush. I'm using the same brush. The amount that's in there is enough to do the top of the wings. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the wings again. Bit more of the mustard color. You should have plenty in those little pods that I gave you. See, now this is really not drying enough. You really need good drying time. So put your brown on and let it dry for a while before you resume painting. As I could see that I'm not getting good coverage out of this. But at least you'll get the idea of how to do it. Okay. See the difference in the coverage that I have here, but I kept going over it when it was dry. And a 
again on the front. And I'm even going to do a third coat. I'm going to do color dries. Each coat that you do makes the color more vibrant, unless you paint it on. If you paint it on, it'll be a big difference than what I'm doing with the dry brushing. Okay, and I'll do the beak another time. This way I get better coverage. Okay, so I have his head and I have his yellow. So now I'm gonna to go to the orange. I'm gonna pick up the orange, put it in the brush. And I'm gonna do the orange across underneath the yellow. I go in two directions, back and forth, and go up onto the yellow a little bit. And don't forget this little area in the front here. Okay, see that? Now if you think that orange is too bright, you could also put a dot of the brown. Oops. Into the orange. Get yourself more of a uh, harvest orange, a rustic orange. Yeah, then we have to let that dry too. Again, a little bit of brown, a little bit of orange, mixed together. Take all that moisture out of the brush. If you notice, every time I dip, I go to the paper towel. I don't go right from the paint to the piece. Okay, so now I'm gonna be doing the other side. And again, I'm going across the grain without going into the crevices. This way my crevices can stay brown. And what that ha happens, it, it allows it to look like it's been antiqued. Okay, now you could always go back later with your little brush and draw a, black, a brown line back in there again if you feel that um, you got rid of too much of the crevices and you don't see any of the brown. You also can do it with a marker if you let your piece dry really, really well. And it's too solid, you can take a brown marker and you can go in between and draw a brown line in between. Okay, so now um, that's the only place I have the orange is on the wings. All right, see that? So I'm gonna see if I can go back now and do a second coat. And each time I dip, I put a little dot of brown in my brush and then orange. And I'm getting more of a, of a harvest orange. Orange rust. Now this piece is from Gare, G-A-R-E dot com. It's one of their pieces that um, I buy to teach these library classes and put it up here on YouTube. So I use a lot of their bisque. The paints also I'm using are from Gare. They're Gare acrylics. I'm using them too. I also use Mako and some Duncan, but for these classes where I have to fill up, you know, hundreds of pods, I find that these big jaws really come in handy. Okay, so I did the orange again, and look at the difference each time. And like I said, let it dry, because I'm not getting the coverage I would really like to get. Uh, if you could see on this one versus this one, it's still a little streaky. And I also see that I'm gonna go down a little bit further with the orange, you can go all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm going up and down, but I'm not filling in the brown crevices. Okay, did that. A little bit of brown, a little bit of orange. And we'll do the other side. Because I'm gonna bring the white up from the bottom at the end. The only place I would say do two coats of the brown is on the back here because I left that. I left that in just the brown. So maybe two coats on that because you don't want to see that streakiness on there. Okay. And make sure you get this little section here in the front, the flat side of each of the wings. Oops, yeah, I see another little spot there. Okay. All right, so we have those colors on there. So I have the gray with a little bit of turquoise in it. I have the yellow beak, the yellow on the top of the wings. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back, maybe my yellow is dry, without washing the brush. I'm just picking up a little bit more of the yellow. 
and I'm going to pounce some of that yellow down and blend it into the orange. It's still a little wet, but it is better. Oh yeah, look at the difference. Okay, see that? It's brighter. Each time I do it, I mean, I could do three, four, five coats. I'm going to go back here. Because this is where it was really streaky. Now that's much better than this side. See this side, how light it is? So the drying time is really very important when you're dry brushing. Because if there's moisture on there, it's almost impossible to layer your colors like you should. Okay. Um, I think now I'm going to do the turquoise. Oh no, let's do the red. Let's do the red next, okay? Because I can go right to the red from the oranges that are in the in the brush. I pick up a little bit of red, wipe it out, see how fast it turns to red? That's orange in the brush with the red. And then I'm going to do it on his wattle. Look how fast that turns red. And again, I'm going against the grain so that I can leave the brown still showing in the crevices. And just remember, this is your piece. You don't have to do it exactly like mine. This is just a suggestion and to show you how I did my sample. But you are the artist, I always tell everyone that, and you can do whatever you'd like. You could look up pictures of turkeys online, but the red, I mean, one coat of the red is probably sufficient. Okay. There we go, I have the red done. So now I'm gonna go to the turquoise. And again, I'm not washing my brush. Picking up a little bit of turquoise, wiping it out. I'm gonna do it a couple of times. I'm gonna use the turquoise to clean the red out of the brush two, three times until I get the color I want on my paper towel. And the way I did the yellow across the back, <clears throat> I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with the turquoise. And your every color is being applied a little bit over the previous color. And do the turquoise right to the top because the white will come down right over it. Okay, see what I did? Now that's not enough color and I'm gonna have to do it a couple of times, but like I said, it needs the drying time. Pick up a little bit of color, wipe it out. And then do the other side. Now the wing is um, a pretty big area, so even though I'm going back and forth, I'm not liking how it was filling it in. So I'm just going back and pouncing some flatly right on the flat areas of the tail. And then I'm gonna follow it around on the other side. Oops, where am I? I'm gonna start where the yellow ends. Flat side of the brush, remember flat side of the brush. I'm gonna go almost all the way up and I'm gonna bring the white down over it after. Now when you do the white, you're gonna to have to wash your brush out. You have the luxury of letting it dry. When I'm doing a class like this, I don't have the time to really let my brushes dry, but you really need to let your brushes dry. And then you do your white now. Since I got a nice turquoise there, I'm going to be doing the front over again. And if you wanted to put some into your wings, I mean, you can. If there's no right or wrong, like I said, and you just do whatever you feel. I'm just following the sample, the original sample that I did. And because I had the red in the brush, it's taking a while to get the turquoise to be a nice color like this one, okay? So I just do it a couple of times. Each time I do it, it wipes more of the red out of the brush. But again, you can also wash your brushes in between and then just let your brush dry before you go back and do another color. Like I said, I'm not doing that in the video. So there you go, all right? See that? All right, and see this one, the yellow's a little higher. You can do that. You can, you know, there's no right or wrong on this. So now I'm gonna be washing my brush out and 
hopefully I get most of that color out of there, but you should wash your brush and let it dry before you start to do the white. I'm gonna see how I can do this. I have to really dry my brush well. The paper towel takes a lot of the moisture out of the brush. Okay, so now you're gonna pick up a little bit of white. Oh, I think I picked up the gray by mistake. White, I need white. some white. Now if the first time I picked up a, a lot of the white, not a lot, but more than I would normally use to dry brush, in order to clean whatever's left out of the brush and then the gray that I just put in the brush by mistake. Okay. And now when you first start, which because you want the brunt of your white on the uh, tail feathers, I would start here. When you do this, have very little in your brush, otherwise you're going to paint the whole thing white and you don't want to do that. Same thing here. Okay, so we start going down from the top. Now, again, you can come down as far as you want. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to come down this way. So I'm going to be doing both sides of the tail. You see what I'm doing here? So I'm doing it a little more solid at the top of the tail. See here? and then feathering it down with the brush. You're not painting it, you're feathering it, which means you're lifting your brush as you do it. And each time you do it, the white will get whiter. So I'll do all the areas once, and then I'll go back and do them a second time. Just look how much whiter this is on the sample that's done. Now, before I dip again for more white paint, and when there's really, really, really nothing in the brush, I'm going to lay this brush flat and I'm going to hit the edges of his um, upper body where all the cutouts are. So I'm going to do it toward the middle and then I'm going to turn it around and turn it upside down again and do toward the middle this way. So you're meeting in the middle with the two applications. And so even though you think there's nothing in the brush, there is. And I'm going to do it again because the second time I do it, it makes such a big difference. Okay, now you see what I did there? All right, and the same thing here. I'm not going to dip again. I'm just going to come up, turn him upside down, and come up from the bottom. And when you come up from the bottom, you're only hitting. And you can do that with this little square brush also. Just come up from the bottom and just hit nothing in the brush, remember, no paint. When you dry brush, your brush is almost completely dry. If you properly dry brush, you almost see a powder forming. I'm not gonna see that now because my brush is a little wet, but when you really dry brush accurately, you will see a powder forming. And a smaller brush might be a little better to do it around the, the head, so you don't get it on it. So I'm going back over it again. And see that? All right, so now I'm gonna dip into the white again and I'm gonna start all over again. I'm gonna start with the tail. Now look at the white, look at the difference in the white, the three I just did versus the first coat. Makes a big difference. And since this is the area where you don't mind if you get a little more, I start that first. Get rid of all that paint in the brush, turn it around, come down the other way. No dipping. No dipping. Oh, you know what? I did forget to do the bottom of the wings. So just get a little bit of white onto the bottom of the wing. And again, everything is from the bottom up and it's feathered. When I call feathered, you see that little feathery effect that I'm getting? You're not painting it, you're feathering it up. It's called dry brushing. And then we'll do this side. And you can come up onto the side of the wing. I did a little bit. I came up onto the side just a little bit. Okay, and now again, nothing in the brush. Even though there's nothing in the brush, you see how the white is getting whiter with each application? It's 
it's hard not to get it on the face, on the, um, the waddle. So I do it and then I wipe it with my fingers right away to get it off. Okay, nothing in the brush. Again, I have not dipped except one time when I started the tail. And now I'm using that same brush load. Well, I have a big brush, don't forget. You're probably gonna have to dip a, a little bit more often. Okay. And again, if you wanted to do this again, you could keep going until you like the effect that you get. But they're very similar, aren't they? This guy's red is a little bit deeper and that's because I only did one coat on that. You can go back. Now, as far as eyes go, if you have black paint, you can do it with the back end of a brush or a toothpick, but you can also do it with a marker. See if my marker's working right now. You just need to have your paint nice and dry. And just draw a little circle. Okay, see that? I just did that with the marker. This is an extra fine point, ultra fine point Sharpie. And if the marker's not working, wipe the tip a little bit because sometimes it picks up some of the paint in the, the tip. And you also can do, see those two little lines in the beak? There's one on that side and there's one on that side. And you could do that also with the, um, the marker. Okay. All right, so I've got that on there. So I think I've kind of finished him. And if you see any spots that you're not happy with, um, you know, you can, you can uh, do a second coat back here. Or you can dry brush a little bit of the white back here. Just to give it a little bit of texture. Also, um, I see some white spots that I have and I, uh, I told you that that was gonna happen. I see some little white spots. I'm gonna go back with my brown, with my little brush and touch up some of those white spots that I still see in there. But it's pretty much the same. Every time you do something, it's going to be a little bit different. Like I see here, I could do the yellow another coat on here. Um, but two pieces don't ever come exactly alike. This is art and you are creating each time you do something. So your pieces are never exactly the same. I find when I do something the first time, I really don't like doing it a second time because I usually like my first one the best. But um, two, no two pieces ever really come alike. And it's your piece, so you can be as creative as you like and you can do whatever you want with it. But um, I wanna thank all of you for watching my videos on YouTube. I have quite a few up here and right now. I think I have like about 20 videos on YouTube and I'll be doing a lot more for the holidays now. Uh, this turkey for Thanksgiving is adorable. I've used him so many times in classes. I wanna thank all of you for watching my videos and for enjoying ceramics. And I hope to see you soon and happy Thanksgiving to everyone and stay safe. Bye.